In this video I'm going to recreate the game of Pong, which is a really popular game and every one of us has played it or seen it before. First we could create some constant variables that hold information about the field. So field length is 50 for example and field width will be 15. Next we can create a character value for the tiles so field tile equals this character for example and a string variable that will contain the lines on the top and on the bottom so string This method will basically repeat this field tile character this many times, so 50, 50 times. Next, we can create our game loop. We need to set the precursor position to the beginning where the first line will start, so 0 and 0. And then frame the line. Then we have to set the cursor position to the bottom where the second line will start. So 0 and field width. If we start the program, here we can see our two lines. Next, we can create variables about the rackets. So const bracket length it will be an integer it will be equal for example to field width divided by 4 and we of course need another tile so bracket like that we can create another loop here, which will start from zero and continue to bracket length, I mean minus one. And first set the curvature position to where the first bracket, the left bracket is, so zero for the left and y plus one. because we, we want to start below the line on the top. Now print the tile. And change it from zero to field length, minus one. And start program. Here are our two rackets. Now we should create some variables that hold information about the rackets themselves and where they are in the field. So left racket height starts, it starts from zero and Right height. We also start from zero. And we can add them here so that it updates left racket height and right racket height. Now we can update these values by checking if the user has pressed any keys. So we will have a loop here. So console key available. This value will be true when a key is pressed. So until it isn't pressed, 
this will this loop will continue. When a key is pressed, we can check which key is it. It is so also read key. And now check, for example, if it's a parallel. We can first check if the right racket height is more than zero because we don't want it to go over the field. And then if it if it's over zero, we can decrease this value. And we can do the same for the other keys. So down arrow. Here we have to check uh, if it's less than field width minus racket height, racket length minus one. And then we have to increase it. Uh, the other player will we, we use the W and S keys to move. Then check if the left racket height is greater than zero. If it is, decrease it. Then copy this if statement. And if the left racket height is less than this, we can increase it. Now, when we press W, I'm currently pressing the S key and the racket is moving, but it isn't deleting the old racket. The same thing happens for the other one. And we can we can fix that by deleting the entire line every time we update it. So we can copy this for loop here. But it will be field width minus one. Or field width, but it should start from one. And it will it should clear the entire line, the entire column. So like this, and instead write a blank space. So let's see if that works. And that, that seems to be working just, just fine. Next, we should create some variables about the ball. So uh, the first coordinate is going to be field length divided by two. And the second will be field with divided by two. Of course, we need our character tile for the ball. And we also need the directions of the ball. So, Boolean is ball going down which will be true for now and is ball going right and the way these values will alternate is when for example these are our two lines this is where the rackets are um when the ball reaches the top, the first value is ball going down. Currently, it's false because it's going up. But when it reaches here, it will switch to true and it will continue downwards. Then when it reaches the bottom, it will uh, 
switch from true to false. And then when it reaches one of the rackets, uh, the other value is ball going right. We will switch from true to false and it will bounce this way. And eventually when the ball reaches the other, the other side, but the racket isn't where it is supposed to be and when the player misses, the points for the other player should increase. So this is how the scoreboard might look. Every time the console isn't pressed, uh, upper key isn't pressed, we should uh, update the ball's position. So first we need to set the, the cursor position to where the ball is. So ball X and ball Y. Then we have to print its character, so print the ball tile. Then we should uh, add some timer so it isn't too fast and the players have time to react. So this, com this command will sleep the console for this many milliseconds. And uh, now we can update its position if it's depending on, on where it's moving. So if is ball going down, we can add to its y value. And if it isn't, we can decrease it. And we can do the other the same thing for the other value is ball going right and like that. Now if you start the program, you can see the ball is continuing downwards, but we haven't added any if statements to check if the ball is, has reached the bottom or the top. So the way we do that is by typing ball y first we yeah ball y equals one because we want to bounce the the first line is the the yeah we want to bounce from the top line and the bottom is ball y Field width minus one and if it's done that then we can change is going is ball going down to its opposite so it is working. And check if the ball has reached one of the rackets. We need to check if the ball hits. Is equal to one. If it has reached the left racket, then we have to check if the its its second coordinate matches the racket. So if it's more more than or equal to the left racket height plus one, and it's and if it's less than less than or equal to the left racket height plus the racket length and if that is true we should uh, change this value to its opposite 
and if the player has missed and the ball doesn't match this uh, coordinates, we should increase the other player's points and we should uh, add values to know how many points each player has. So int left player points it is, is equal to zero and also equal to zero. We can increase them here, right player points. And we also have to reset the both positions. So and we can do the same for the other side. So if it's equal to field length minus two, because if you remember our right bracket was at position field length minus one, and check if it matches the right bracket. Alternate its direction, and then if it if it's missed, then we have to add players to the other, add points to the other player. And let's see if that works. The ball bounced from the left racket, from the right racket. Now let's see if. Uh, yeah, it resets and we need some kind of way to delete the, the, old, the old position of the ball. So after this sleep timer, we can uh, return the position at the ball and write the blank space. So this seems to be working. The ball is bouncing from the from the rackets, and now we need to add the scoreboard. We need to add values for it, so And its y coordinate should be uh, after the field, so field length, a uh, field width, plus three, for example. And we have to print it after. It, the the points are increased so console set correction position to scoreboard the to the scoreboard uh, coordinates and then print uh, left player points and right player point. And we can do the same for the other player here. As you can see, when the bomb, when the player, when one of the player misses, the other gets a point. Let's see if that works for the other player as well. Yeah, it seems to be working. And we also can 
check each time if the game has ended. So let's say 10 points. Uh, we can we can get out of this loop by creating this go to function and we can also do the same for this then we can check uh, which player test and is one. First, need to clear the console, and set the position to the beginning. Can you write some message, for example? And do the same for the other player. Let's see if that works. And the message is written. And left player one. It seems to be working just, just fine. And that's about it. That's about the game. Thanks for watching.